Hey, it's Buddy again from Root and Earth. Thank you for joining me for another video. Likes, shares, subscriptions, these all help my channel greatly and I appreciate everyone who has supported so far and would ask you to please do any of those things if you don't mind. I'm standing in my front yard and morel season is starting to wind down in my location. Um, it'll continue going as you go up in elevation for quite some time, but I have had some questions about tree identification, and so I thought I'd start a new little series where I will uh, profile each species of significant tree that I use for identifying locations where I might be able to find these mushrooms. Um, there are few trees in the southeast that are more uh, significant to mushroom hunting than tulip poplar. And I am standing in front of one right here. This is a young poplar. And uh, when you're looking for poplars, when they start out young, they are very slender and straight of trunk. And um, the bark is very smooth when they are young, and it has light gray splotches with some darker gray background color. Very smooth when they're this size and young. Um, as they get older, the bark changes, but uh, the leaf shape is very distinctive. You can see it's not completely dissimilar from certain types of maple, but... Uh, it has these lobes, and the outer two lobes are, let me pick one so that we can look at it better. So the outer two lobes are kind of broken with a scoop in the middle, and then the top one is as well, and you have one, two, three lobes, or six, depending on how you choose to look at it. I look at it as three lobes, that are scooped in the middle. They get pretty big, very distinctive. They're kind of fleshy. Um, the tree has a distinct smell to me, but uh, people call it a tulip poplar because as it starts to flower, it produces this little structure here they start out as small kind of pill-shaped bulbs, and then over time they become a flower that looks like this right here. They're green with orange stripes on them, and they have these yellow structures and a central structure which looks almost like a tiny baby corn cob. Now as this flower ages, it will open the petals will fall off and this central structure will become a series of seed pods that look like this. And when I was a little kid, we used to play with these all the time because when they fall from the tree, they fall like little helicopter blades. And they're pretty fun to play with if you're a kid. So those are the main identifying features of this tree and if you will familiarize yourself with this tree while it has foliage and flowers on it then you will be able to identify it when it is devoid of foliage by simply looking at the bark and the form of the tree which is important because when you are looking for spots to hunt mushrooms a lot of times you're trying to find them, especially morels, you want to scout out your spots before the season begins. By the time the season begins and they are fruiting, the trees have put very small leaves on, but not big enough to really identify them if you are not already familiar with the tree. So it's very important to maybe spend this year identifying these trees and then over the winter, continue to go back and look at them so that you can identify them by bark and form alone. We will look at bark and form on older trees right now. This is a white oak. 
some people might mistake this for poplars because they are similar in color but uh, let's take a look at the form of this tree it is pretty straight um, it's similar in size to a lot of the poplars in my area but um, you'll see there's a few low branches on this tree and as you can see they are very straight out from the trunk itself and they're also somewhat curved and and a little bit gnarly the leaves are obviously a different shape as well i'll go into oaks another time but one of the most important distinctions is that if you look at the bark on the white oak it has these striations and if you are to like stick your fingernail up under a little piece of bark it'll come off in flakes it flakes off really easily um, and that is much different than a poplar bark so if you can easily stick your fingernail and pull off little flakes chances are it might be an oak or something else like that this is a large poplar tree unlike the oak it is extremely straight it is about the same size as that other tree we were looking at it is very close in color to that other tree but if you look at the bark um, it has striations as well but they are quite a bit bigger i can fit my finger into the grooves of this bark and if i try to pry a little bit off with my fingernail it is not going to come off this is just very solid i mean you could scrape at it but it does not flake off in any way shape or form um, you can see that compared to the young one that we looked at with the smooth bark this has maintained a very similar coloring some of those blotches have smoothed out as it has formed these striations and you will find lots of these lichens growing on it but it has maintained that nice light gray color it is very similar in color to the the white oaks and sometimes these trees are so tall that you may not be able to make out the form of the leaves that i was showing you although on this tree when i'm looking at it i can easily see the leaves and tell by the shape of those that it is indeed a tulip poplar um, also if there are no leaves on the tree a good thing to do is always to scan the ground underneath for dried leaves um, remnants of those flowers and also the little propeller seed pods but that's not an absolute guarantee that you are in the right area because trees are very tall. Those things can travel quite a ways when they fall. Now, looking at the overall form of the trees, um, here's one behind me here. And you can see that they are very, very straight, extremely straight. And the branches at the top all go upward and out it really reaches for the sky and the branches are all very graceful and flowing here is another tree here that is a poplar no branches down low very straight very elegant flowing form to the branches all going upward and spraying out here is an oak this is a white oak you can really see the flakes of bark on this oak they're scales and it's a lot different than the poplar which is very even in its striation pattern but that's a little bit of the different form and features of tulip poplar familiarize yourself with this tree because it is definitely one of the most key species to know when looking for a whole host of species of mushrooms in the southeast i hope this video will help you out with your foraging thanks so much for joining me again
Have a good day.